So now the rough is all ironed and starched, the next thing to do is to actually set it. Um, a lot of people get hung up on working this out mathematically and I am not somebody with a particularly mathematical mind and I'm not convinced that Elizabethan laundresses uh, worked things out mathematically either. I think they were just very practised and very skilled. I'm reasonably practised and reasonably skilled, but <laughs> with more practice, it gets easier. So the first thing you need to do is find the centre of the rough. You can do that by just folding the neckband in half. This one's got eyelets um, already worked in it, which helps to find the centre anyway. And then you can follow the grain line of the fabric along to find the centre of the actual rough. And you could either put a pin in it or you could use um, a disappearing pen, which is a bit scary because I always wonder at the point I'm drawing on, is this really a disappearing pen? But I know it is. So you can just do a little mark like that. Now, the thing that Elizabethan laundresses had, and we also have our fingers that you can use to measure. This is a big 1590s style rough, which means it's gonna have very big sets. So I'm gonna use all four fingers as a guide for the size of the sets. So I'm gonna put my fingers in down to the knuckles, and then I'm gonna put a pin there. By the way, I don't normally wear nail varnish. I went to a party the other day and it's quite chipped, so don't look at that. Right, so that's the first set. And then I'm gonna put four fingers in again and I'm positioning the pin, Let's see if I can show you this, the pin that I put in, I'm gonna position in the middle of my four fingers. <laughs> to do some twisting and turning now. Put another pin in. So that's four fingers. And then again, position this pin. I'm going to have to turn around, I think. This pin in the middle of my fingers. can see how it's starting to form the sets and all I have to do is keep doing the same thing. So you can see that was a pretty simple way of making the sets. And just to complete the rough, we need to set the starch in the figure of eight sets, which I'll show you in a minute. But just to say this method works, obviously you can use fewer fingers to make smaller sets. So this is a rough that's a slightly smaller, um, has a slightly smaller uh, depth anyway. And with this one, I decided that having three fingers just to the first joints rather than all the way into the knuckles so just there was a nice size and because it's got uh, lace on it it actually makes it even easier because you can check how many um, how many of the little points of lace are in between each pin so for each one I can just double check that 
there are seven um, little points uh, beyond the pin. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I put another pin in and make sure that there's one point between the pins. So that one will always be very regular because you've got the lace to help you as a guide. And then this one um, is an even more modest rough. And actually I'd, I'd set this before and taken all the pins out, but just to show you, um, these ones are literally just one finger width. So that's pretty easy. Obviously you could do a, you could do a tiny one with a little finger. I guess the size of the laundress's hands are going to dictate the size of the sets that she could do. And maybe that was a little bit of a, maybe you could even spot who'd done it um, from the size of their hands. Anyway, I'll show you how to do the final set. So to set the start, the starch on the roughs, you need um, poking irons uh, or poking sticks. Uh, I use a modern curling tong for hair. Um, and this one, this brand is particularly good because the heat goes all the way to the end of the iron and it also comes with an alternative um, fitting so that you can you can make smaller curls in your hair or you can starch smaller roughs. Um, what I have used in the past are these kind of old fashioned curling irons, but they need an actual flame. So I usually do use them over the cooker, but they are really lovely for um, very small and delicate wrist roughs, for example, where even that attachment is too chunky. But I find this one is useful for most size roughs. Um, what I do first is just re-dampen the rough to just um, soften the starch again, just with a misting of water. And then actually, these hair curling tongs came with a, it's not heat proof glove, but it does actually help because it's very easy to just burn your fingers um, using these. And you're literally just going to poke the iron into the linen and smooth it round like this. And it just needs I don't know, five to 10 seconds maybe on each set, uh, just to dry out that water and reset the starch. I'll reposition the camera so you can see. So that's one side done, and now we'll just flip it over, do the same again on the other side. So that's it, the whole thing. Um, I love the transformative effect of starching and setting. And my message to you is remember that roughs are just a length of gathered linen and they're transformed by the laundress, AKA me and you, using our skills to iron and set uh, 
and arrange the roughs in a beautiful fashion. Um, and the, the great thing about the fact that they are just a gathered length of linen means that this rough, when it gets dirty and the, all the starch gets washed out and it can be reset, can be reset in a completely different style and it will look like it's a different garment. Um, and it looks a lot more complicated than it is. Good luck. <laughs>